Ricky Lambert with you on the Flow FM Morning Show and as promised, I'm going to lay out some landmines in front of myself and try and walk past them. Let's see how we go. We're going to talk about some topics touching on women and the political debate around them. Now, first of all, the Prime Minister has announced that there will be new policies across the nation regarding sexual harassment in the workplace. And some people have been already asking, well, what happens with flirting in the workplace? How do people end up forming a relationship in the workplace? It's going to be a fraught topic and above my pay grade. But in the midst of those announcements, the Prime Minister has also declared that politicians and judges will for the first time be subject to the same workplace sexual harassment laws that other employers are. I think this is a good move. These have been areas that have been off limits and there was a justification for it maybe in the past, but we now are in a different age where the same standard is expected of everyone and we now need to make sure that even though judges are meant to be above reproach because they're independent and we want to treat them in a way that makes sure that they are not second guessing what they do when they're in the judge's seat they certainly can't be sexually harassing people in their workplace either so that's a good move and a good announcement but on the topic of judges there's been an interesting debate in New South Wales regarding an Aboriginal woman who was strip searched at Wagga Wagga at the police station and she has asked for her trial in relation to the allegations that were standing against her. She wants that trial to be heard by a woman. She has argued, according to Aboriginal culture and practice, that the footage of that strip search should not be shown to a male judge. It's an interesting debate and it goes into the realm of the legal treatment of Aboriginal people and respecting their culture that I will not go into here because it's quite a technical debate, but it is a very interesting argument that should women only have cases heard against them by female judges or magistrates when the case pertains to deeply personal and sexual matters. Now, in South Australia, there was an interesting announcement regarding the Equal Opportunity Commissioner, the person who's been appointed to that post, is the former Chief of Staff of the Attorney General. The Labor Party immediately jumped up and said this was a biased appointment and something that should not have happened. But it does seem to me on the same day that the Prime Minister was announcing that politicians and political officers are now for the first time going to be treated on the same standard when it comes to sexual harassment. Maybe someone who has been a political operative, this lady has previously been an MP in the Northern Territory, maybe Maybe that's the very person you want in that sort of role when a new focus is going to be applied to political officers. And lastly, as mentioned before 8 o'clock in the news grab, the RAAF, the Royal Australian Air Force, will no longer have airmen. They will have aviators as they seek to be more gender inclusive. And in an effort to prevent more problems for their young recruits when it comes to sexual harassment, the Chief of Defence has recommended that young recruits avoid some more A-words, alcohol, attractive, I take it they mean by that, people that you might be attracted to, A for after midnight, don't want to be out then, and the last one, alone, don't leave yourself alone. What's happened to our country? I really got to wonder that we have to tell people about these sorts of things. Has it always been the case? I'm not so sure.